Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and welcome to another Fro Film Project episode. And this time we're going to talk about ISO and how the camera knows what ISO you are using. So depending on the model of the camera that you have will depend on how it reads the film canister. The, the film canisters have this silver area. It's kind of like a barcode that the camera can read. And inside, right now I've got my F5, you have these one, two, three, four, five, six digital contacts that will connect up with this canister to then tell the camera what speed film you are putting in it. Now if you have an older camera that's fully manual, up top is usually a place where you set the, the ISO. The reason you have to set the ISO is so that you can get a proper light meter reading. If you have the wrong light meter reading with say 400 speed film but it's set to 1600 speed, well you're going to get the wrong exposure for your images. So that isn't good. You don't want that to happen. So this canister is read by most of the cameras that are out today, a lot of the older ones, but anything that is mechanical, you have to set it yourself by turning the top dial or wherever they have the ISO information to the proper ISO of the film. So what this means is that in you, you kind of set it to one ISO that you have and you don't change it. You get a whole roll of this is 3200. Well, I shot the whole roll at 3200 because you can't be changing around from 3200 to 400 to 600 to this. Now, you can compensate for different changes in lighting by changing your exposures. That's what you had to do. You couldn't change the film speed. And, and sometimes you had to know that if you were going to shoot 3200 indoors, you may not be able to go outdoors to get the same pictures with the same film because the light is going to be so much brighter. You may not even have enough shutter speed to make it happen, or you may not get the the results you're looking for because you have to go to like f22 you're cutting down on light but that's getting off the top uh, topic a little bit now how did you cheat the camera how did you tell the camera that you had a different speed film a lot of people would say they put 800 speed film in yet they'd shoot it at 640 they would want the meter to read it as if it was 640. They'd underexpose, they'd overexpose, depending on the effect that they were going for so it really the camera reads the, the barcode-y, silvery thing right here. I don't even know what it's called. I'm sure somebody out there will tell me what it's called, but it would read that. It's different for each roll of film. So this is 3200. My camera reads it as that. If the barcode-y, silvery things were in different places, it may read it as 200, 400, 800, 1600, or and so on and so forth. But you do have overrides in even the F5. You would click the ISO and turn it to where you wanted it, but what I want to tell you is that it didn't reset after the roll of film. So if you had, you know, you were going to 1600, you pushed your 800 to 1600 speed film, one stop, and then you put in a roll of 200 and you forgot to change the ISO back to the DX. Oh yeah, they call this DX. This is the DX code. I think that's what it's called, the DX code. Um, now that I'm remembering, thinking back to the old days, uh, you, would you would have to change it back. Because if you didn't, you'd still be metering for 1600. You'd get all your photos back if you were paying attention to the meter, and it would be wrong. So that's how the camera reads this DX code to give you the ISO for your film so it talks to one another and gets it right. So there you have it. That's another f uh, Fro Film Project episode. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click the subscribe button right here below the video as YouTube has made the change. And one more thing, click on subscription updates, manage subscriptions, and if you would like to get an email every time I upload a new video, click this box. If you'd like to see it in your feed on YouTube, click that box. And over on froknowsphoto.com, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can go ahead and put your name in this box, your email in this box, hit send it, and I will send you a free photo guide, a guide to capturing motion in low light situations. If you're new to photography or you're somewhere in the intermediate range looking to learn a little bit more about your camera and how to get out of auto, don't forget about the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide, a guide to getting out of auto. It's at a special price right now. It's a three hour long video. You can buy it as an instant download or as a free as a physical copy with free shipping around the world. So thank you guys very much for watching.